Big bike. Big bike. I like this town more because it's more old school than new school. Because, like, more people read the paper than actually look through the internet to know what the news is all about. We all just kind of read the newspaper, we yeah. go to our jobs, read it when we're at jobs. Yeah, just like gives it more of that yeah. historical look. Yeah. Yep. Very old school around here. I'm Mark Esper. I'm the editor and publisher of the Silverton Standard and the Miner. Well, I'm also the reporter and the photographer and the circulation manager and the classified ad manager and, well, the janitor. It's no secret that the newspaper business has been through some challenging times. I guess it was September of last year. I became very concerned about the future of the Silverton Standard, and I did not want to be the last editor of the Silverton Standard, this great historic little newspaper. Silverton is an amazing little community. We don't have a chain store, we don't have a chain motel, we don't have chain restaurants, we don't have chain anythings. However, a few years ago, a large newspaper chain, for some reason, bought the Silverton Standard, and so business operations were moved to Telluride. Didn't really work out very well, so this has been going on for a few years. I, I began to think of some way that we could bring back local ownership, which I thought was absolutely vital. The first thing that came to mind is the San Juan County Historical Society. And so I walked, uh, walked up to the courthouse from my office here at the old hospital, and I walked into Bev Rich's office and said, Bev, what would you think about the Historical Society taking over the Silverton Standard? Mark came in and he said, you know, they're going to close it down six months. And we thought, and we thought, and we thought. I said, well, why don't we go to the owner, Randy Miller, and see if he yes. won't donate it to us. Frida, I said, well, what do you think? What if this doesn't work? And she said, well, at least we will have tried. And I thought, what a great thing to say. We couldn't let it happen without trying. We have a committee, Frida, and George, Fritz, and me. We met with Mark a couple of times and reported back to the other, the board, and the board said, yeah, we're going for it. When Mark came to us, we said, only if you stay on for a couple of years. And all you have to do is read the newspaper to see that he's good, you know. After several weeks of negotiation, the San Juan County Historical Society took possession of the Silverton Standard and the Miner, and we have local ownership again. You don't realize how much you depend on, on the newspaper for finding out what's going on. Everybody reads the paper because you, in a small town when it comes out once a week because all week long you hear the rumors and they circulate around town, but then you get the paper to verify, was it a rumor or is it just, is it the truth? Back up and drop! Another reenactor, folks. Let's let him get up. He falls pretty good, too. Well, we'd hate to see the uh, newspaper cease to be published because it's been part of this community for over a hundred years and happy that uh, the paper is now locally owned again. I don't want just an information paper with a lot of ads and uh, stuff like that, which I want this to be a living, breathing organism that uh, ticks people off now and then and other times uh, they can applaud it. I mean, there's got to be good and bad. It's got to be a balance. Everybody in town has just been absolutely thrilled. We've gotten all kinds of subscriptions. Even our school kids have given us $2,000. And so they came up here and they, they gave us this huge, this $2,000 check to the Silverton Standard to keep this newspaper alive. We have a few regular contributors. Freddie Canfield, otherwise known as the guy at the dump. I call the co column Weather and Observations. He also throws in a little bit of his Zen philosophy and his appreciation of the San Juans. Yeah, they had chain law in effect on uh, all three passes. Soggy doggy weather continues this weather week. Gray skies and growing greenness continue with temperatures ranging between 25.7 and 64.5. Fog moistens leaves and conifer needles and also our lungs when we venture forth on trail. Bi Perino is out there with her wheeled walker in all kinds of weather. If Bi can, I can, and so can you. Enjoy every moment. No excuses. Thanks, Freddie. Right on.
I am just really happy and relieved that the paper here is not going to shut down. It would have been a huge loss to this community because we are quite isolated up here in the mountains. Mark Esper is our editor. I feel our paper has improved dramatically since he took it over. He's just awesome. Our circulation is growing. Uh, we're putting out about a thousand newspapers a week right now. I've worked for larger newspapers. I've worked for smaller newspapers. It almost frightens me how much I've grown to care about this community. I'm not writing this newspaper for the town council. I'm writing it for the people of Silverton. And that means listening to the people of Silverton, not just the official story of Silverton. Oh, I love this town. It's going to be a struggle to keep this newspaper alive. And I am in it for the long haul. We have got to save this little newspaper. Okay. Soggy doggy weather. Just the last few weeks in Silverton, we no longer have daily newspapers delivered here from anywhere. Um, we don't get the Denver papers anymore. We don't get the Durango paper. Denver is 300 miles from here, about a six hour drive. We're the last newsstand standing. I feel like I have a lot on my shoulders. The, the community depends on me a lot. I so appreciate their support that I'm gonna, I'm gonna be there. I'm seeing just a few serious clouds. They don't look like very serious serious clouds. This is gonna be one absolutely, absolutely bluebird beautiful day. This is what we've all been asking for for this weekend. And uh, it looks like it shall be. Hey. Thank you. Good morning. You too.